Hello, Nick Ritter here with another Cavalry tutorial. Today we're going to be making this thermostat. The rotation of the dial dynamically changes the numbers in the center and the color. Let's get into it. Step one is layout and design. I'll click on the circle, alt drag to increase the size. We'll make it about ooh, that big. And then I already have a color palette set up here. So I'm going to take this darker color. So I'm doing night mode, drag it over to my lip shape, fill color. There we go. I'm going to duplicate this and decrease the size of our copy. Can't see anything right now. Get rid of this fill, add a stroke and increase the width of that stroke by a decent amount. Resize a tiny bit, add a trim. So that's in the stroke tab, click the trim checkbox. And then let's say, let's go to 42. And then now let's go to 35 and 65. This stroke will help us indicate where the start is and where the end is of our dial. And also looks like a smiley face. This is our circle base. And this is our limiter. Next, we'll create a text layer. I'm just going to put in some numbers here. Hit enter, go to ladle black, set the alignment to center and the vertical alignment to middle. Increase our font size. And we'll go with that for now. Normally to set a color from your color palette, you click and drag in from the blue circle all the way to your layer. Uh, I'm not going to do it this time though, since we have a color change effect, we'll add a color blend. And in this case, color blend goes to white. That's fine. We'll connect this blue circle to our text shape, fill color. There it is. Okay. We're just going to log that away for the moment. Label this one temperature. Okay, and the last bit of our design is the dial indicator. So that's the little line that goes around the outside. So let's create an arc shape. It's this little C criterion collection type shape right here. Hold down alt, click on shape, solo this. I'll change the outer radius to go to about here and the inner radius to go to about here. So this will be how long that line is. Start angle, I will change that to zero. And then the end angle, let's set that to maybe three. I do want this to have rounded corners. So go into deformers, hit the plus button, add a bevel. And the thing that will animate is the rotation. So the rotation will start over here. One, two, three. Go ahead and set a keyframe. And then the rotation will go to negative. That looks like 120. Make sure we're in our time editor. And I forgot to move frames when I did that. So I'll just move the keyframe over, set this back to 123. Now, when we go between the two, I just want to make sure that they look even close enough. So that is almost our layout. We still have our temp temperature to replace. And the way to do that is to create a string generator. So here's our string generator. We'll actually need two of these. So I will duplicate this. One of them we'll call our format and the other we'll call our value. Let's open these up. Under the string generator, we have a drop down here to tell what kind of generator we're creating. For this example, we're only gonna worry about the formatted text and the value. So this one's called format. I'll change it to formatted text. This one is called value. I'll leave it at value. What value does is it takes a value, it's a number, and it converts it into text. This is important because the formatted text string generator only accepts strings as its input. So it only accepts text, not values or other numbers. So you first have to convert a value or number into a string for it to work in the formatter. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll take this value and connect that into our string zero. So now we have 50 but it turns into this 00050.000. That's a lot of extra zeros. We don't need any of those. Precision is anything after the decimal and padding is anything before the decimal. I'm gonna change both of these to zero. So no decimals at all. And then just give me the value that I have typed in. Now this is set at 50. And if we connect the format right now to our temperature text, it's hashtag 50. The way that this formatted string works, we have these curly brackets surrounding the number zero refers to the first string, which is labeled as string zero. And then the hashtag is the prefix that's in there by default, but we're going to delete that and add a degree symbol. So if you're on windows, you hold down alt and type in 0176, let go of alt and you have a degrees symbol. And when we click away, you'll see that the number updates. 
If you're on Mac, hold down Shift Option 8. A little simpler. So now we have our formatted string. The way I centered it up is to center it right on the number and not including the degree symbol. Uh, this is obviously up to whoever is giving you feedback or your own design instincts, however you want to do it. So I'll just take the position of my text layer, move it over. That looks pretty good. Now our layout is totally there. Next, we rig our design. What I want to happen is when I rotate my arc shape, it changes the color and the value of my temperature number here. And while I'm thinking about it, let me connect my color blend to the arc shape. Let's look at how we do this. The rotation starts at 123 as its starting number, and it goes to negative 120 as its finishing number. So we need to convert that number range into a number range that's useful for our temperatures, say 50 to 120. And we can do that with a number range. So I have number range right here. So the source minimum, this is the starting number, if you remember, is 123. The source maximum, our ending number, is negative 120. Next, we connect our rotation to the value, and then we set the, our temperature numbers. So we want to go from 50 to 120. Now we connect our number range right into number, and then let's change the rotation and see if that affects things. Hey, look at that. So the rotation does drive the numbers, although it's backwards. So there's a graph button and we can just flip it with this button right here. And now when we go from the beginning of our rotation, it starts at 50, we go to the end, goes to 120. Our numbers are officially rigged. Next thing I wanna do is connect our rotation to an animation controller. The way I'll make this by adding an element, just like anything, animation control, and we'll connect our animation control into rotation. And now, because we have our keyframe set up, when we slide amount from 0 to 100, we go from the minimum to the maximum. And the final thing to rig up is the colors. I'll open up the color blend, and our color blend goes from the first color to the second color using strength. So right now it goes from black to white. But we want to set this up to signify a cool to hot. I have my hot and cool colors down here. Click and drag the hot color over to color blend in your scene window. Under gradient, go to gradient.0, and that's the first color. And then you can click and drag your cool color over to color blend gradient, connect to gradient.1. And that's our second color. And then our animation controller will animate from 0 to 100. And so we can let this amount drive our strength by just connecting our amount directly to the strength. Now we're going between colors but the colors are backwards. So we can just click and drag these keyframe looking things here. So we start with blue and go to red. This animation control controls our rotation, the color, and the number. And if ever we wanna go through and change the number, so say 120 is not enough, we wanna show this thing that it can go up to 200 degrees. Then all you do is in the number range, just change that maximum number. And say you want this to go from freezing, just type in 32. And now when we change our amount, we go down to zero, that's 32. Go to 100, that's 200. So let's animate this thing. Go to zero, make sure you're on frame zero. Click the keyframe button. We'll go to frame 20. And increase that to 100. And then let's go to our graph editor. Add a little bit of interpolation. I don't think it needs to be too extreme. That feels pretty nice. Maybe give it a little more easing at the end. Beautiful. And then we'll give it a couple of frames, add another keyframe, and then go forward maybe six frames or so. And we'll move this down to 90. But we've got a little bit of overshoot and then it corrects itself back to what it wants to be. So you make this just a little less extreme here. Let's play it back, see how it looks. Cool. Now when it moves really quickly like this, so motion blur can add a lot of like movement and energy, but I'm more interested in adding a smear. I'll show you what I mean by a smear. We'll go to the middle of our animation, open up our arc shape, solo that, change the start angle to go negative. You see that our stroke becomes a lot broader. So what I want to do is halfway through the animation, I want it to go to maybe negative 20. Uh, we'll go a little bit before the middle of the animation and set a keyframe for our start angle. Set the start angle to zero and then go to 20 and set that start angle 
to zero again. If you play this, you'll see that we get the effect of motion blur with having a different aesthetic. It's not quite there. So I'll go into the graph editor, add a little bit of interpolation, and then increase the end just a smidge. We'll, create, we'll increase the end and the beginning. Nice thing is, is you can select both keyframes and when you move one, Calvary is smart enough to mirror the movement of the other keyframes handle. So there we have it. We have a dial animation with a single animation control that's controlling the color and the numbers. And then we just animate the start angle of our arc shape to give us that smear effect. But thank you very much for joining me with this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please drop a comment below. Subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.